Players are still hoping for a total collapse. So you've gone to the restaurant. It had a good recommendation. You were excited to indulge in some of their cuisine. You go in, you get seated, you place your order. You wait patiently. And when it finally arrives, things are missing and you were charged for things that you didn't even order. That's how players are feeling right now with Wizards of the Coast. Welcome back everyone. MTG Moxman here. Thanks again for hanging out with me on the channel today. The players right now in Magic the Gathering have a lot of allies with each other. With the understanding and that slow burn anger everyone is feeling toward the company that is Wizards of the Coast and the disconnect the company seems to have from the consumers of their products. Magic the Gathering has a diverse group of players who enjoy this product in several different ways. You could be a commander player, vintage, legacy, modern, standard, pioneer, brawl, Popper, it doesn't matter, even Arena. Each of these groups enjoys the game in their own way. But this also leads each of those groups to having a different way, a different belief in how the Wizards of the Coast as a company should be dealing with them. The one thing that all of these groups can agree on though, is that Wizards of the Coast is not doing a good job. When they look at Chris Cox or Cynthia Williams, most of these groups, if you ask them, would say, just fire them. Let it all collapse. Start over again. Players want change. They want to let Wizards know how discontent they are with the status quo. And they are willing to show Wizards this by not buying their products. The pricing issues that we have gone through in the last few years have been truly detrimental to the growth of this game. Wizards of the Coast fails to recognize that by reprinting products at this accelerated rate to try to make them more appealing to players, they lost out on revenue from players who were investing in the game. And I'm not saying that this game is meant to be an investment tool for the future, but Wizards of the Coast did become reliant on that income flowing in from players buying boxes to hold on for long term, by stores buying a few extra cases of every product coming out for future sales. But when they started to ramp up, when the company decided that they wanted to tap into this revenue stream by reprinting at an accelerated rate, bringing new products down the line, by pleasing one area of Magic the Gathering, they upset another group that had a larger pocketbook, honestly. They had more money available to spend. When you're looking at the investment groups who got the seven-figure salaries, that really outdoes your pauper playgroup. I'm not saying that's a fair assessment of everything but that's how it goes down because you got a player who can afford to spend 200 grand a year on magic versus a player who can spend 50 bucks but the 50 dollar group as that vocal group saying give me what i want and the other group being quiet in the back says fine you're going to keep reprinting this stuff i see all the value i have tanking i'm going to walk away and that's the problem that the company is having by trying to please too many people at the same time even now Wizards of the Coast was frantically trying to find a way to get that revenue stream back from those players, to bring them back into the fold, spending money on the game. And they gave us serialized cards, which right now have been a success. It is getting players talking, but they are still reprints of stuff that already exists. There's nothing new and classy about cards that are serialized from like the Brothers War. They're kind of fun. They're kind of cool looking but it's still a reprint card that already exists. The one ring is like a giant infomercial to buy Lord of the Rings, but at least it gets people talking. Wizards of the Coast will have to do a lot more though to get those players to spend money because those players are some of the bitterest group you will find. They spent tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars on sealed product, individual cards like Mana Vault, only to see their cards reprinted time and again or new reprint sets replacing old ones that they've already put away on the shelf. The accelerated rate of reprinting turns those players off. High prices turn off another group. Lack of accessibility turns off yet another group. Wizards of the Coast will have to individualize things a lot more to get most of the groups satisfied from each of these different parties. 
And they tried it when they gave us all these different products, the collector boxes, set booster boxes, draft boxes. They gave us brawl decks, pioneer decks. They are throwing everything at the kitchen sink to try to get us into those product lines. And because they're doing it so haphazard, with no firm line, they're going to fail again. They have not found the path yet to get them to where they need to be. Wizards of the Coast needs to get in touch with the player base again. They gotta stop ignoring the people indulging in their products and they have to reach out to us. They gotta touch us in special ways and say, yes, we want you involved in the game. Surveys that can go out to the player groups by those who sign up for email addresses to give continuous feedback. Price points that we find acceptable in the game. Product lines we would like to see. Card ideas and concepts. Storyline ideas. They have an untapped reservoir of players. All with different opinions and views, but when enough of those ideas go in, it gives you a general idea of what the players would like to see, doesn't it? You might please more often than fail. You might be surprised when you get in touch with people what they're actually thinking might not be so far-fetched. It may be a couple of great ideas out there. Diamonds in the rough, man. That you can say, that's a good idea. We can go with this. Let's do some storyboards up. But at least by reaching out and making the attempt to get in touch with your players again, with all these different factions and groups who now enjoy the game, at least you'll have a little bit of input on what players are thinking. And it won't just be a customer complaint department. Nobody needs that kind of fest going on. I'm talking a website with different questions coming up, different avenues, and letting players know that you care a little bit about where this game is going to go. And you're not going to design it on your own. You're going to design it with the players having a hand in that. And I think that will go a long way, at least starting a conversation. It's definitely not the end. I understand companies like this have to make money. But you got to put your hand out and say you made a few mistakes and I'm willing to learn from them. And I'm not sure they're there yet as long as Chris and Cynthia are there. But if you dump those two people off, it's a good start to the rest of the players out there who want them gone anyway at this point. And maybe you can slowly turn things around. Maybe. Thanks a lot for tuning in today. Thanks for hanging out on the channel and allowing me to entertain you. And uh, yeah, put those ideas down in the comment section. Let's see what you guys would do. In case you're wondering how things get done here on the channel, you're looking at it right now here at the end credits. These are the patrons. The patrons of the channel who support me, MTG Moxman, and allow this content to be created by financially helping me out. Thanks. Went and saw Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. Thanks a lot for being here at the end credit as I ramble on. I'm not sure what I was expecting. I'm not. Um, I played second edition. So having like half dragon people and half cat people, that didn't exist back then, okay? It seems like I was, it was a little weird to me. The story was okay. Graphics are way better than way back in 2000, obviously. And Chris Pine did a great job himself. I wasn't sure about the rest of the actors, some were okay. But I would say, I don't think it's going to do well enough to make a sequel, unfortunately. And I think they tried to go too grandiose with the expansiveness that is Forgotten Realms, just like they did with the... D&D set for Magic. They went a little too far and they should have been a little more focused in a smaller area to do a better storyline for that area. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how I felt. It was good, but not great. Six out of ten. Thanks a lot for hanging out, guys. I'll see you soon. If you saw the movie, let me know.